there you go. Right. So let's take some insoluble compounds. All right. Now, calcium fluoride is actually a nacolnoso because you have a fluoride. You would think that it was soluble. This is sort of an exception to the exception. It is a weird one. But for all intents and purposes, we're just going to dissociate that. It's a solid. Mm -hmm. So if you took calcium fluoride, you dropped it in water, it would settle to the bottom. Yes. And it would make, but some of it... A tiny little bit makes Ca plus 2, or 2 plus. 2 pl plus. And 2, two F minus. So let's kind of draw this pictorially. I think yes. in a beaker. You don't like my beakers. The drum. All right. Dum, da, 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 dum, we have da. a liquid. 50-gallon okay. drum. A 50-gallon drum. And if you were to take calcium fluoride... In just powdered mm -hmm. from like a container and mm -hmm. drop it into water, the vast majority of the calcium fluoride would be a solid that would settle at the bottom. But a very small amount of them would break apart into calciums and fluorides. And we can figure out how much of it does. And we can figure out how much of it does. Okay, and it would uh, uh, go with this equation. So we can actually write what's called the solubility product expression, which is called a KSP, yeah. which is just the K expression. K expressions, as you recall, is the products over the reactants. Right. So that would be equal to the calcium mm -hmm. times the fluoride. Squared. You have to square it because of the two here. And we've yep. done this before. Mm -hmm. Over? Over nothing. Over nothing? What do you mean nothing? Products over reactants. Right. But what's up with that? I thought it was products over reactants. It is. Why couldn't I put the keys? Because that's a solid. We are only concerned with things that are aqueous in the yes. system. You have to actually have, it's not really that it's solid. No, it's, it's, it's just different. Homogeneous equilibrium. You right. must have the same state of matter. And since this is aqueous, and I didn't write that in there, and this is aqueous. When you have charges, it's implied that it's aqueous. These solids get ignored. So yes. you actually, these math are actually easier because you don't have a substance on the bottom. Mm -hmm. This second one would have the same uh, deal, magnesium phosphate. It would break into three magnesiums with the two positive charge plus the two phosphates. And then the KSP expression would be equal to the magnesium, Mg2 positive. And what would you do? What's that, Mr. Cubed. Sims? Cube it because of the three right yeah. here. And then the phosphate. And you would square that. And then barium sulfate, the classic one everyone uses, Ba positive 2. Now remember, all sulfates are soluble except for barium and other varieties. And this is one of those ones. It's insoluble, so it breaks apart. And we can say the KSP is equal to the concentration of the barium, 2 positive, times the sulfate, 2 negative. And there's, they're both to the first power because, of course, this is a 1 to 1 ratio. Yep. Now, there are tables of KSPs. You have one there printed are. up in your table. It's also in the back also of the your back textbook. Book. A25, if you have Zumdahl 6th edition. Now, I want you to take a look at all those numbers, Mr. Sims. Mm -hmm. What do you notice about all those numbers? They're tiny. 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 13th, 10 to the minus 23rd. Have mm -hmm. mercy. And if you go down even further, 10 to the minus 49th for Holy silver cow. sulfide. 10 to the minus 88th for iron sulfide. Nice. That is a tiny number. Yeah. I think I heard somewhere that there are 10 to the 82nd power atoms in the universe. Wow. So this on the other end of the scale is at the same magnitude wow. of that. Yeah. That's so, like, that's nuts. Yeah. So that's a tiny, tiny, I mean, uber tiny number. All right. We're going to use some of these uber tiny numbers next. All right. Now, when we talk about the solubility, um, we usually measure the solubility in something called molarity. Yes. And we all know what molarity is, moles per liter. Moles per liter. So we want to find the solubility of this copper 1 bromide. Yes. So what I write is I need to write the form of co copper 1 bromide. Yes. Now that means Cu plus 1 and Br minus yes. such as CuBr. 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 Cuber. Cuber. <laughs> is that like goober? Kind of. Pile or something? Yeah. Right. Make Cu positive 1. I think you just dated yourself. Plus there Br negative. <laughs> it's Gomer pile. Gomer pile. It's Gomer, not goober. It is. And our students don't have a clue who that is. I only sort of know that because I used to watch it on Nick at Night. I'm old. So, folks, <laughs> yeah, it's my own fault for being old. Okay. Now, we know that the solubility of copper 1 bromide is 2.0. So actually, let's just write the KSP. It's asking for what's the KSP. Right. Well, the KSP is equal to the concentration of the copper, positive 1, times the concentration of the bromide. And the solubility is how much breaks up. Yes. Now, this is a tiny number. Right. That means that there will be 2.0 times 10 to the minus 4th for the copper and 2.0 times 10 to the minus 4th for the bromide. Right. So actually, what this is giving you 
is the values that you're going to place into here. So you can say 2.0 times 10 to the minus fourth times uh, 2.0 times 10 to the minus fourth. So this is going to square that number. Yep. You get four. I could do this times yeah. times 10 to the minus eighth, right? Yep. Is equal to the value of the KSP. Now, what would be the units on KSP? Um, it, it could be mole squared per liter squared, but we really don't care about units on okay. KSP because they're going to be different for every substance. I'm not sure we've said this, but in all yeah. Ks, the units don't matter. Nope. In the equilibrium right. K, the in kinetics K, they often do. It does. So yeah. you just doesn't matter. Yeah. Ignore them. Okay. We have our permission to not write units. Ah! Now, what if I do this one? What is the molar solubility of silver sulfide? Well, that's just kind of working in reverse. Yeah, so if I've got silver sulfide, now Ag is positive, and S is negative 2, so that's going to be Ag2S, right? Yes. And that's going to break apart into two silvers, mm -hmm. and then S2 minus. Yeah. So when this breaks apart, it's almost like a BCA table, but not exactly. Yeah. I like to call it the two, this is going to, because of this two, it's going to break down to 2S as opposed to an X. I think okay. an S for solubility. Okay. I can live with that. And this will be an S. S. And we know that the KSP is equal to the concentration of the silver positive squared times the S negative 2. But this is 2S and this is S. Yeah. And when the KSP value, we can go back and find that mm -hmm. in our table. It's uh, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 49. Oh, well, this is one of our small ones. Is it on here? There it is. That says 1.0. My book says 1.6. Interesting. I'm going to go with the Zumdahl textbook. 1.6 it is. All right. All right, now I go back to my place. So I can say 1.6 times 10 to the minus 49th would be equal to S, pardon me, 2S. I'm going to substitute this 2S in for silver, and I'm going Squared. to square it, times it by the S. Now, a lot of students will make a mistake here. Yes. What is 2S squared times S? Most students will say, well, it's 2S squared, and that would be <coughs> wrong, because this 2 right here is squared. So it's 2 squared. So 2 squared is 4. four. So this becomes 4s cubed. Yes. So now I'm going to solve for s. You can yep. put it in your solver, although this is almost this not even a solver. I'm not going to use solver. I divide both sides by 4. Times 10 to the negative 49. And then i got to take the cubed root. Yep. Now, what I would do is actually take it to the power of 1, one divided third. by 3. So whatever he gets when you divide by 4, you take it to the one-third power. That is the same thing as the cube root. And you get the molar solubility to be... 3.4 times 10 to the negative 17. I don't even know how to do cube root on this cal calculator. There is a way. And I have, to, <laughs> I have to sit and think about how to do it. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that means... Now, what does that actually mean? That means if I had a bucket, okay, of silver sulfide, and I put some silver sulfide on the bottom, it would be a powder. I could put, and it wouldn't matter how much I put, I could put 100 grams or 10 grams or 1 gram, it would settle at the bottom. It'd be a powder at the bottom. I don't know what color it is. And then you'd find some silver kind of black. It's and some sulfide. When silver tarnishes, that's silver sulfide. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I think I did know that. Yeah. Okay, so you would find the silver black. Perfect. Okay, <laughs> then you would find the silver sulfide, but the concentration, that the, the solubility, the concentration of this would be that number we just calculated, which yeah, was 3. 3.4. 3.4 times, times 10, 10 to the, the minus 17th 17. molar. Now, most molarities we work with are like 0. 0.1, yeah. 1. This is 10 to the minus 17th molar. Tiny. This is it. So, did it dissociate? Yeah. Just an itsy, 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 bitsy small amount. But this amount, and they say, why do we study this? Well, there's actually some really cool applications to this, which we will learn about um, probably in our next podcast. All right, one more. What about bismuth 3 sulfide? So bismuth has a charge of plus 3 sulfide minus 2. So that's going to be Bi2S3. And that's going to break apart into two bismuths with a charge of plus 3 plus 3, three. sulfides. Now, this is going to break apart into 2S and 3S. Three three S. S. Mm. Okay, And our KSP expression would be equal to the bismuth squared because of the coefficient times the sulfide cubed because of its coefficient so we can now and the value of the KSP is Given here, here. 1.1 yep. times 10 to the minus 73rd would be equal to 2s squared times 3s cubed now a lot of students ask me this question I hear this question often ask them Mr. Bergman you have this 2s and then you're also squaring it you're dealing with that 2 or in this case the 3 twice yep and you know what? They're exactly correct. Why you do that? 
Because you do. It's just the way the math works. It's yep. the way the math works. I don't want to, there, there is a deeper answer. Um, deeply read your textbook, and I don't even think they even answer that question. But Not very well. Or at least not very well. So now let's, I can see if I can do this in my head. 2 squared would be 4. So this would be 4s squared. Yep. Now 3 cubed, 3 times 3 is 9, times and then 9 times 3 is 27. So this will be times 27, that's a 7, s cubed. So 20, that's 108 maybe, is that right? 27 times 4? Uh, 27 times 4 is 108, yeah. 108 s to the fifth. So now I'm going to say, I'm going to get a new screen here, I'm out of space, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 73rd is equal to 108 s to the fifth. Divide both sides by 108. Those cancel. What do you get when you divide those, Mr. Sam? Uh, 1.02 times 10 to the negative 75. And that is equal to s to the fifth. So if you take this number, so you take 1.02 times 10 to the negative 75. Take the fifth root of it or take it to the one fifth power. Parentheses 1 over 5, yep. parentheses, equals or enter, and you get 1.00 times 10 to the negative 15. Makes it a lot more smaller. Actually, interesting thing about this problem, this one had a very, very, very small KSP, but the molar solubility of this one was 10 to the minus 15th. The previous problem was, actually, let's go to this screen was 10 to the minus 17. This was actually less soluble, hmm. the silver sulfide, than was the bismuth one. It has to do with the fact that this is this fifth power in the mm -hmm. mathematics of it. And so again, what would this look like if I were to draw a beaker of the bismuth sulfide? Okay, you would find the bismuth sulfide down here, the solid Bi2S3, and then you would find bismuth ions and sulfide ions up here, and they would be uh, the concentration would be, what did we say, 10 to the minus 15th molar. Still very, very small, mm -hmm. but some of these break apart and dissolve, but just a very, very like small amount. Two. Yeah, I mean, I mean <laughs> 10 to the minus 15th, uh, what, uh, 10 to the 9th is a billion, 10 yeah. to the 12th is a trillion. trillion. So whatever's after a trillion, quadrillion. parts per. So one in yeah. every quadrillion molecule breaks up. Yeah. And you say, why do we care? We'll show you later. That'll be on the next podcast. Yeah. And what do you get to hear about on the next podcast? How Mr. Mr. Sam's Sam? speech and debate injury. The speech and debate injury. Yes, indeed. We will hear interesting stories about Mr. Sam's. I look forward because I do not know this story. <laughs> I want to know. So we will see you uh, later, possibly in class or um, if you're watching this via the internet um, and you're one of our internet kiddos. Um, maybe you'll never meet us. Oh, well. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye.